Hello YouTube, what's going on? This is Chris, and today we're going to be reviewing this 2016 Maserati Quattro Porte. I'm here with Peter Chan from Thompson Maserati in Doylestown. So we're going to take out the car for a drive, and I'm going to go over the interior specs and uh, do a little bit of an in-depth review of this car so you guys can uh, get a feel for it. Let's go for a drive. This car drives really smooth, nice, just floats right over everything. Extremely spacious interior too, it's really nice. The seats are really comfortable as well. Effortlessly, it just goes right up to speed, picks up the pace very nicely. Now M is for the paddles, right? Yes. Nice responsive paddles. Shifts are really quick. There's a lot of um, you know isolation from the road. There's almost no road noise whatsoever, which is great if you uh, you know obviously you don't want to be hearing any uh, you know any of the road noise at all. So this car definitely does a good job of isolating you. And like I said, the car floats just right over bumps fantastically. So you're uh, very secluded from everything, which is nice. Great pickup from the engine. This car has the same twin turbo V6 as the Ghibli, correct? Correct. So 404 horses. Gets you up to speed really effortlessly, which is awesome. Just a little heavier, longer wheelbase mm -hmm. because of the Yeah, stuff. exactly. It sounds just as good as well. Put it in sport with the paddles. You can have some, plenty of fun with this car too. I really like this car a lot. It's very uh, really spacious. It's awesome. Okay, so if you're looking like at a seven series or uh, S class, like an S class, yeah, or Audi A8, definitely uh, you got to throw this in the mix. For sure, yeah, this is definitely worth taking a look at, especially if you're someone who is uh, more of a driver-oriented person who really likes to uh, have some fun. This car is definitely very unique, really sporty car as well. But like I said, you know, you get that that luxury feeling that you sh would expect from a large car with a big price tag so you know you get the isolation you get the very smooth ride all right guys so because of time we had to uh basically do a little bit of a short route drive wise but um i figured i would just show that again this is a more luxury oriented car so it's not like i'm going to be you know racing it and doing a full driving review regardless um, I really wanted to focus on this review more of the interior this car so. this is a really really nicely specced car uh, looking at this seat over here, you can see this is a, a nice brown seat. The brown leather uh, trim on the doors, uh, two-tone contrast with the black on the uh, you know the panels there. You can see you have a really nice dark wood here. You can see down here, again carrying through to the uh, center console, and then on the roof you have plenty of Alcantara as well, which uh, you know I really love Alcantara. I think it's sort of a uh, you know a high-end uh, material, gives a very sporty feel as well, which is awesome. Uh, looking at the steering wheel, this is basically just like the Ghibli this interior if you've driven a Ghibli or you've seen my review of the Ghibli you'll find a lot of the things are very familiar the uh, the shifter column is nearly identical entertainment center nearly identical same steering wheel same paddles same gauges again all the switches very familiar as well this is just a very uh, a much larger car so basically the back seat is um, you know way more room back there a lot more uh, headroom as well um, and the car just feels so much wider, honestly. Uh, when I drove the Ghibli, it definitely had a sort of snug, sporty feel. This car, they went all out, really, really wide open feel. Um, you know, the car just feels fantastic. I am six foot three inches tall, no issue with headroom, no issue with legroom. Plenty of width and space in here as well, which is fantastic. So really, you're just gonna have an extremely comfortable, spacious, and luxurious ride. These seats are extremely comfortable very uh, plush very soft um, you know they still are you know a nice sort of firm feel as well um, so it's not to feel too plush these are definitely uh, much softer than that of the you know the Gran Turismo seats which is a much sportier car you still have some decent bolstering here as well which is fantastic you know they really hold you in place and uh, keep you from sliding around um, and here in the center console lots of storage and two cup holders go ahead and shut that have a little storage spot right here with an aux input and a USB, much like the Ghibli again. And here you got two more cup holders and another power outlet, which is fantastic. 
over here for more storage. Glove compartment, plenty of space in there as well. Over here on the side, you have a nice little uh, pouch there to put some stuff in. I just put my wallet in there. And again, that's the same on the other side as well. So here in the infotainment center, uh, this is a really, really nicely laid out and very easy to use uh, system. Um, I really like how there's buttons and it's not it's not touch. Honestly, the, the touch stuff in most cars is a little bit slow. So, you know, buttons are much more tactile, they give good feedback, and they're much faster, I think. Um, however, the entire touchscreen system is actually very fast in this car. There's almost no lag, if at all, when tapping through these screens. Um, you know, the car has no issue just um, processing any of the input that you give it, which is fantastic. Um, you know, a lot of cars I've driven, the touchscreen system is very laggy, it's very slow, it's hard to use. You can see here, have the radio, music player, you have seat controls, there's rear power sun shades. You tap that, puts that up, which is really nice, keeps the interior a little bit cooler, a little bit less sunny. You can go ahead and tap that, and it comes back down, which is awesome. Heated steering wheel and heated seats, of course, for the winter, which is fantastic, especially in these Pennsylvania winters. Go ahead and hit climate. Plenty more options there. You can choose the uh, dual passenger zone, different fan speeds, of course. You can uh, tap these buttons down here again to get back to the uh, seat and steering wheel controls as well, which is pretty uh, convenient as well. So here's your navigation, of course. This is where you would, uh, you know, get directions. And your uh, phone option over here. I'm not gonna connect my phone, but you can get calls, look at messages and uh, stuff like that. So, and again, you get these buttons down here too for the uh, climate control. So if you don't wanna tap through the uh, screen here, you'd rather just hit these buttons you can do that as well, which I think is great. I really like that a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and climb into the back seat now, give you guys a feel for that. Um, I have a feeling it's gonna be real comfortable. I've sat in one of these once before. So. All right, so sitting back here, uh, again, very tall person. I have no issue with headroom or legroom at all. And considering I put this seat uh, back when I took it out for a drive, um, I have still plenty of space, uh, tons and tons of space uh, width-wise here, which is awesome. Have a nice flip down center console here. Open that up, you get a USB and a power outlet. More cup holders. Again, you do get some of that wood trim carrying throughout, the nice two-tone brown and black interior, and these seats are equally as comfortable as the front seats, which is great. You know, the rear passengers, you will have uh, no issue in terms of comfort. Rear passengers do also get heated seats. You get sunshades here on the window, and again, you have the access to the uh, power sunshade back here as well, which is awesome. Really nice for a hot summer day like this. Passenger sunshades are controlled over here on the window switch. All you have to do is tap this button and down it will go, exposing you to the uh, sunlight. And you can tap the window switch again to lower the windows manually or fully automatic as well. Wait for the window to shut and up comes the sunshade. The Harman Kardon sound system carries through to the rear as well. You have a nice speaker down here, little tweeter there. So uh, rear passenger audio is uh, not going to be an issue at all. Little storage cubby there, storage there in the door. I got to say, sitting back here, you do feel like you're on top of the world. This is a really awesome uh, experience sitting back here. Uh, it's a very luxurious car to say the least. Um, when driving it, I really like how Maserati has just uh, bridged the gap between luxury and sporty. And they've done it in the perfect way um, so that it's a great experience. The car has, again, it has road isolation. You don't hear any road noise. The engine noise is pretty quiet, but if you open up that sport mode and you, uh, you, know, you get that sound out a little bit, you hear the engine come to life. The car zips right up to speed, uh, carries effortlessly, and uh, you know, the paddles, it gives a nice sporty feel. So some of these sporty features in the car, you know, they really make it very unique. There's not many uh, cars out there that uh, you know, they drive like this. So this car with the twin turbo V6, it's uh, very fast with the 404 horsepower. And like I said, it shifted so quickly with those paddles. So I was really, really impressed. And the, uh, you know, the sound from the rear end when you open up the uh, exhaust sounds phenomenal. So I'm gonna take this outside and give you guys a sound bite of the uh, exhaust and give it some revs.
guys, so you can see here's the Quattroporte that was featured in the video. Really, really gorgeous. Gray exterior. Nice sporty touch with the red brake calipers. Those wheels look really good. Really handsome front end. A little less aggressive than the Ghibli, but you still have this, uh, you know, this front fascia right here. And the, uh, you know, the nice angel eye headlights. Going down the side. Got a nice chrome accent. Little flares there. Back door is huge. Gives the car a really unique profile. Still remaining sleek. Obviously, it's much longer than the Ghibli is, so uh, you can definitely see that while looking at it. But it gives it a very, uh, you know, it gives it good road presence and a really nice style. Rear end here, you have the nice quad exhaust tips, the Q4 badging, and of course, the Maserati Trident right there on the side. Thank you so much for watching this video of the uh, 2016 Maserati Quattro Porte SQ4. I had a blast driving the car and reviewing it for you guys. And uh, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed the video as well. If you did, be sure to click that like button as it really helps me out. And subscribe to my channel for more future videos like this one. We have the Gran Turismo Cabriolet coming up next, and uh, you know, we'll see what other cars we can get on. If you haven't already, check out my Maserati Ghibli SQ4 review the Gran Turismo review that I have up, and my Alfa Romeo 4C Spider review that I have up. If you guys are interested in purchasing a Maserati, be sure to come to Thompson, Maserati, and Alfa Romeo. I'll include their information in the description below so you guys can see what cars they have available in their inventory and get some information as to how to get in touch with them to come in for a test drive and check out some of these awesome cars. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Take care.